What's up guys, welcome back to Wild Willow. So if you own a UV laser or you've ever thought about purchasing one, there is a chance that you were interested in engraving on glass and that's what today's video is all about. And we're gonna be using our Calm Marker Omni 5 Watt. So your girl has quite literally been the busiest she's ever been, for good reason, okay? Our business is doing well, things are going good, but unfortunately I did not have time to tackle this project so I did have to send it over to my R&D department. And let me tell you, they kicked butt. So much butt that it took them an entire week to run all their tests, cut their samples, run all the things, and they did a really good job and they have some really good information that will help you guys get started in engraving and cutting glass. We're gonna be going over subsurface engraving and also cutting glass in today's video. So if any of that interests you, follow along. And don't worry if you miss me. You're gonna see me later at the end of the video because I do wanna go over some upcoming videos I have in mind to get your guys' opinion, see what you guys think. And I also am going to an event soon and I'm curious if some of you guys are gonna be going. So I'll see you guys at the end of the video. I'm gonna send it over to our R&D. Hi, I'm Joel, head of research and development here at Wild Willow Woodworks, AKA Emily's bitch. And when she doesn't wanna spend the time doing countless tests one after another on new materials, she makes me do it. So I spent the last week cutting, engraving, and finding some cool techniques that you can use with glass. So when it comes to cutting glass, setting your focal distance is gonna be super important. I started off with the focal distance of 332 as recommended by Calm Marker. And all the focal distances I'll be talking about in this video, I'm talking about measuring from this line. Uh, even though I will use a focal tool, I'm still talking about the distance to this line to keep it simple. I made a 10 millimeter circle in light burn and set it to fill. I used some of the most powerful settings that I had found in my previous test, which was a frequency of 40, a Q pulse of one, and a slow speed of around 100. So I started the laser and I did what I like to call the sizzle and spark test. You wanna raise and lower the laser head to the point where the laser beam is sizzling and sparkling the most. That should be the point where your focus is the most powerful on the glass surface. So after doing the old sizzle and spark test, you're gonna to wanna to measure your distance and check where your, where your line is at. I was very close to the recommended 332, so I just started from there. Um, you could just leave it at that and that could be your point, but I wanted to take it a little bit further. So what I did is I started running material tests at all different focal lengths above and below that range where I found to find the distance that I would get the best engraving at. After many tests, I found a focal distance of 330 to work the best with the glass. I'm pretty curious what other people are using for their focal distance, so leave a comment and let me know what you found to be your best focal distance if you have a UV laser. So now that I found a focal length that I was happy with, I went inside and I printed uh, a focal stick. This is from JMac on Maker World. It's called the Big Scary Focus Stick. Um, I've printed quite a few of these and they're super handy, they're adjustable, and he comes in all different sizes. So if you have a 3D printer, these are definitely very cool. I then wanted to check something out because I had been getting some uneven engraving on some of the glass that I was doing, where some of it would engrave good and other half, the other half would not. So this led me to believe that the laser head was not level to the laser bed. I used the focus stick to show like the different sides, to measure the different sides and see how far away the laser head was from the bed. And what I found was that some of these were, comp were not very even. Even though the differences were pretty small, as you use expand the image out more, those differences are gonna be magnified. Also on more sensitive things like glass, that can really affect how you're engraving. I noticed that the front of the laser head was higher than the back, so I used small washers to shim up the tower to give the laser head kind of a tilt backwards. I then noticed that I needed to raise this side of whatever you would call this portion of the laser. So I added some business cards under there on the bracket to tilt this piece up a little bit. After inserting the shims, I found the focus point where it's barely touching evenly on all, angle, on all edges of the uh, lens. Okay, so I know that probably seems like a lot just to get your focus set in and you probably don't have to do all those things, but I think it is important 
if you want to have less issues down the road, especially when it comes to um, objects with curved surfaces or uneven surfaces, it's going to help you have a nice even focus. So now that I felt good about my focal distance, I wanted to move on with some engraving tests. In my research, I had read that using wobble while engraving get better results. I already had some material tests from doing the, uh, trying to find the right focus. So I went ahead and just started with doing some tests with wobble on. The test with wobble on produced slightly wider engravings than with it off, even up to speeds up to 10,000 millimeters a second. 10,000 speed with wobble on is completely different than 10,000 speed with wobble off because wobble is basically engraving tiny little circles in a row and you can change how big they are and how far apart they're spread out. So it's significantly slower than engraving with wobble off. So just because the laser can engrave a square at 10,000 speed does not mean that it can engrave a detailed uh, engraving on the glass. So I wanted to test at what speed could I actually run the laser with wobble on. I loaded up our detailed kitty that we use for all of our lasers when we're trying to check for detail and ran the test at different speeds. As you can see, some of these like this one was going too fast at 6,000 and lost a lot of detail. So after testing at different speeds, I found these settings to be the best, to produce the best results in a timely manner. So during my testing, I noticed that some of the engraving would be on the top of the glass, some would engrave down on the bottom of the glass, and some like over here would engrave inside of the glass, also known as subsurface engraving. The subsurface engraving really caught my interest. So I did more material tests that focused specifically on that range. So during my testing for to find a good subsurface engraving setting, I accidentally forgot to wash the glass where I had touched, um, leaving fingerprints on there. And what happened was actually pretty cool. It engraved on the surface where my fingerprint is, but then engraved the inside of the glass behind that. So with that being said, I wanted to figure out a way to utilize the fingerprint and the subsurface engraving on a project. So here's one I did for my son with his fingerprint and engraved his name above the monster truck and doing the monster truck with the subsurface engraving. I also did one with my fingerprint on a heart just to practice and both of them came out pretty cool and I think you could definitely utilize that for making customized gifts for people. So the fingerprint idea is not always gonna work but you could also do the same technique with the subsurface engraving down below in the surface and then adding another layer on top that you engrave on the top surface so it would give you that two layer effect. So what I will say with the subsurface engraving is um, it's way more sensitive to focal distance, um, any fluctuations in the material or the settings. Uh, so I would not use this for a customer provided glass. I would do this with a glass that you're buying and that you can practice on or something that a customer, if they have extras that you can practice first. So lastly, let's talk about one of the things I was most excited about and that was cutting holes in glass. Um, I was super intrigued by the ability for this laser to do that. So I set out to try to figure out what the best settings would be for cutting holes in glass. In my initial test, I was able to cut a 10 millimeter hole in one millimeter thick glass, but it took me about 20 minutes. I was pretty happy that I was able to get through it, but 20 minutes to cut a 10 millimeter hole is crazy long. So I did more and more testing and I was about ready just to quit. I was still about 20 minutes for all the holes, give or take a few minutes, and it was just crazy long. And then I remembered something. I had accidentally set one of my uh, line layers to fill, and I had watched the laser go and peel back layers, peel off a layer of glass. And it got me thinking, what about instead of trying to use line mode to cut through the glass, if I used a small filled in area and I just engraved a circle out of the glass? So I thought, what the heck, I should at least give it a try. I did a, ten, a 0.3 millimeter inset on my 10 millimeter circle and created a small fill area. I found the following settings to be the best option for cutting the one millimeter glass. With 19 passes and a time of two minutes, I was able to cut a hole. I don't wanna bore you guys with a step-by-step -step on every test that I did. You can see from the spreadsheet how I came to the conclusion. I didn't document every test as some took way too long and others damaged the glass, so I just rolled them out completely. I tested many other options like wobble on, wobble off, flood fill, but the results were much slower. So on day two of cutting glass, I came back out to try to pick up where I left off. And that's where I started having some issues. Uh, the same settings that were taking two minutes the day before were now taking closer to five. And I noticed that the laser beam 
was not focusing all of its energy on the glass. It was actually getting through and engraving the surface below. So I don't know what could have changed. I had changed my focus for a different project, but I had put it back right where I had left it. I didn't change any settings in Lightburn, so I'm not sure what could have went wrong. If any of you are more experienced with glass than me, I would love to hear your ideas of why that would have happened or what could I have changed, what could have changed. I'm completely clueless. I've been trying for several days now to get back to that two minute mark and it's just not happening for me. All right, everybody, so that is a wrap for today's video and I think, I think Joel did a really good job for your, your pretty much first ever video. I'm really proud of you. And he spent a lot of time on researching uh, glass and stuff, so hopefully you found today's video useful. Um, I did have somebody ask me about whether or not they should go with a, U a laser like this, a UV laser or a fiber laser. What would be your opinion? Um, I guess it's really going to depend on what your goal is with your laser. Um, if you're more worried about being able to mark on a variety of materials, I would definitely go with the UV laser. If your focus is more on metal, especially like uh, deep engraving, I would stick to a fiber laser. And then also, what, who would you recommend this laser to? If someone was like starting laser engraving and they were interested, like, who do you think? I was actually thinking about this and I think it's basically for anyone who wants to be able to mark on everything. Yeah. Um, whether that's for like a hobby or for your business and you want to, you have a laser engraving business and you want to expand it. Because I know for us, we used to get a lot of phone calls like, can you do a perfume bottle? Can you do... Yeah any kind of like glass or different things and it's really cool with the uv laser just just basically be able to say yes regardless of what it is they want engraving yeah all right well i'm done with you i'm gonna finish off the video so you can be gone my video <laughs> yes this is your video okay. but people missed me they wanted they wanted to see me talk all right well, okay. i'll go okay see you peace Bye. out <laughs> So I did mention in the beginning of the video that we are going to an event soon. We're going to be going to LBX in New York City. It's a laser convention um, that Lightburn's putting on. And if anyone's going, uh, please put it in the comments. Maybe we'll run into each other. I'm super excited about this trip. I think it will be, one, super beneficial for our business to meet people. And we're also going to be taking some classes as well um, for videos coming up. So I am going to be posting a video very soon, probably next week, for a sheriff's uh, canine department. I do have videos on my uh, YouTube shorts and on my Instagram of the sign that I did. And it's a video kind of taking you on the way on how I achieved that really awesome sign. Another video that I want to do that I'm curious if you guys are interested in is um, a video all about setting up a material test in Lightburn. I have so many people reaching out to me all the time asking me if I provide my material tests and all I can do with the time that I have is just send them pictures of ones that I've done. Um, a lot of people don't know how to set up a material test in Lightburn so I thought that might be a good video. Lastly, um, I've been selling a lot of custom patches, not just hats, like I'm just selling patches and I'm selling these patches to people who have never pressed acrylic patches before. So I know I have videos in the past about me going over how to press acrylic patches um, but I was thinking about just making a video for those customers and actually trying to get even more detailed in there. So that way I can send this video to my customers and hopefully um, it will be a more informative video than the ones that I've done in the past. So if you're interested in any of those videos, I'm very curious, put it in the comments. If you guys are not yet subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. I always am trying to put out good, useful information for everybody. Um, let me know how you guys think Joel did. Nobody be too harsh on him, okay? It was his first try. Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time. Peace out.